The second law of thermodynamics says entropy always increases. Entropy means disorder. Anything left to itself gets more disordered. Entropy will never decrease. Left to itself, nothing will become more ordered. And that is the most fundamental law of science. It's the one law of science which has never been found to have the slightest hint of an exception. The second law applies to information systems, just as it applies to everything else. Every cell in your body has an enormous amount of information stored in its nucleus. That information specifies how to build every part of your body. It tells your cells how to repair your body when it gets damaged. It specifies how to make astoundingly complex machinery, like the ribosomes and the mitochondria, which are needed by every part of your body. Your DNA stores this information in a four-symbol code, a sequence of four different molecules called nucleotides. They're usually represented by the letters A, C, T and G, the first letters of the names of those nucleotides. Data stored in electronic computers uses a two-symbol or binary code, usually represented by 1 and naught. The four-symbol code of the DNA is vastly more efficient. In a string of 20 nucleotides, DNA can store more than a million times as much as a computer can store in 20 binary digits. In a string of 30 nucleotides, DNA can store more than a billion times as much as a computer. Some of the chromosomes in your body are about 250 million nucleotides long. A computer would need very many terabytes to store as much information as just one of the chromosomes in one of your cells. Many very clever people have studied information. They've found that information can be stored in many different ways. But the storage system has no influence at all on the information itself. Information written on paper with a pen depends only on the writer. It doesn't depend on the pen or the paper. If what was written on the paper was typed into a computer and stored as zeros and ones, it would not change the information at all. The information in your DNA is stored as a sequence of nucleotides, but that same information can be written as a string of four letters, usually A, C, T and G. A pen and paper have no ability to produce information. They will not produce one line of poetry no matter how long you sit and look at them. In the same way, a collection of nucleotides don't have any ability to produce information either. No matter how long nucleotides are left alone together, they do not produce genetic code. They obey the second law of thermodynamics. Left to themselves, they cannot become more ordered. They can only become more disordered. Gitt's theorems of informatics tell us that information only comes from intelligence. Only the work of intelligence can order nucleotides into a sequence representing information. That's called genetic engineering. Now, how does that fit in with the two possible explanations for the existence of the universe, created by a creator or created by itself? Would it be reasonable to expect large amounts of information in a creation made by a creator? Certainly. And the quality and quantity of that information would almost certainly be an indication of the creator's own intelligence. Would it be reasonable to expect large amounts of information in a creation created by an explosion or by the occasional random appearance of hydrogen atoms or any other purely materialistic method? The second law of thermodynamics guarantees that information will not happen by itself. And according to the theorems of informatics, it could only happen anyway under the direction 
of an intelligence. The philosopher Anthony Flew was the darling of atheists like Richard Dawkins because of his brilliant defense of atheism. But faced with vast amounts of complex information in every single cell of every single organism, he had to admit that the random, mindless processes of evolution could not possibly account for it. Dawkins was very angry with Flu and said, just because we don't know yet how all that information came about, it doesn't mean to say that we never will know. But what Flu understood and Dawkins still does not understand, is that the second law of thermodynamics guarantees that no matter how long you wait, nucleotides will never organize themselves to produce genetic code. So Anthony Flew accepted reluctantly that creation must have been created by a creator. The very famous scientist, Professor Arthur Eddington, made a very famous statement about the second law. If your theory is against the second law of thermodynamics, I can give you no hope. There is nothing for it but to collapse in the deepest humiliation. Anthony Flew accepted that evolution must collapse in the deepest humiliation, even though he wanted it to be true. Why does the secular scientific establishment not follow his example? The best in the field dictum does not allow a disproved hypothesis to be abandoned until a strictly materialistic alternative has been accepted. But there is no materialistic alternative, and there never will be. The second law guarantees that. The only way out of the embarrassing fairy tale of evolution is to join Anthony Flew and acknowledge that the creation had to be created by a creator. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.